Alrighty everyone, welcome back. It is now September 4th of 2023. I hope you're all having an amazing Labor Day so far. And given that there's a lot of things happening right now between the Disney higher-ups, Bob Iger, and let's not forget about the current state of Disney in general between lower merchandise sales, Disney Plus subscribers abandoning ship, and the Disney stock reaching an all-time low. We all know that things really have not really been working well for them. You know, given that the stocks hit a non-year low not so long ago and it doesn't seem to be improving. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. I'm also on Twitter at MikeZero1. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. And given that Snow White 2024 is set, of course, to be one of the biggest box office failures, if not of all time, at least for a live action remake by Disney, you know, we know that there's a lot of damage control going into this thing behind the scenes, a lot of coaching for Gal Gadot, as well as Rachel Zegler on what to say and what not to say once the SAG strike comes to a close, if it even actually comes to a close before the release of this film. That's a bigger question open on the table. But what's even all the more unveiling has a lot to do with what's been going on behind closed doors between Rachel Zegler and Snow White director Mark Webb. Now, just a quick recap, Mark Webb is best known for the amazing Spider-Mans 1 and 2 and 500 Days of Summer. Those are his big threes that he's known for, right? So, what's intriguing about what's been going on, and this has a lot to do with Disney's damage control, why Rachel Zegler is having a very big problem as we speak with Mark Webb, not that she has never really had a great time with him on set, but... Moving onwards, with Snow White 24 going through issues currently due to Disney's mismanagement of the film, one major development has to do with actress Rachel Zegler and the Disney higher-ups. Now, Zegler reportedly is very angry with Snow White director Mark Webb, who has been taking part in some re-edits for the film that were forced by Disney to improve the pacing of this movie. One significant update involves how Webb recently got the editing of the film done through the editors to cut out an entire sequence placed within the second act in which Rachel Zegler's singing takes place for a song about not needing love. This song, of course, and this scene was specifically cut by Mark Webb strictly to lower the running time for the film as Disney was hesitant of releasing a film that was close to three hours and Rachel's major song reportedly went on for five whole minutes. Zegler ended up getting very defensive behind closed doors related to this development for the film since it was at least in her mind one of the best songs that she performed for this actual movie. The song that Rachel performed in this scene surprisingly took place within the same exact location as those leaked photographs did with the seven magical creatures in the middle of a wide open field. So, I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but those leaked photographs of the seven dwarfs, I'm sure that you all have seen them by now, that was actually part, or partially, uh, shot for this song that was eventually cut out by director Mark Webb. Now, it gets worse, we're going to talk about exactly how this goes on to decline even further about this whole scenario, but this was all an on-location shot, right? All outside of the studio, in the middle of nowhere, you know, pretty much essentially shooting a music video is basically what it was. You know, that's essentially what they were shooting at that point in time, and it's very revealing over the fact that Mark Webb got specific demands by Disney to get the editors of the film to cut this movie down, shorten the running time, make it more of a tight story, and improve the watchability of this movie. Because let's face it, nobody's going to sit through three hours of this nonsense. Not that it was three hours, it was close to three hours to be very specific, guys. Probably around two hours and 40 some minutes. They are slowly but surely cutting back on that and trying to really drastically reduce it as much as they can without sacrificing too much. Of course, they are also re-editing it as far as rearranging scenes and repurposing scenes such as color correction, CGI, stuff like that. Now, moving to the next major thing about this, this is where things unravel even further. Now, we know that Rachel Zegler is very overly demanding, just like Brie Larson, just like Phoebe Waller-Bridge, where she believes that 
she has a say above the director and above the writers of this film, but that's not where it ends. This is where the matters get even worse, so let's dive into this further, all right? So, Rachel and the actors who portray the creatures, aka the dwarfs, were involved in the singing session as well. However, the actors did not sing during post-production and that other singing fulfilled those roles by recording lines over their, of course, lip-syncing sessions. Now, they actually had other singing, you know, uh, methods such as singers uh, recording, you know, lines and lyrics behind the scenes over at, you know, Disney and getting the job done in post, matching it up with the actors' lip-syncing, so to speak. So it's not that the seven actors that play these magical creatures were actually singing on set, just to be clear. Now, Zegler got so upset with the cancellation of this moment that Zegler has been getting into many arguments that have been rattling throughout all of Disney that has been creating a quite a big stir for her involvement in this film, as Disney knows that she is nothing more than a PR disaster. They already have been coaching her on what to say and what not to say in the future to the general public if and when the SAG strike ends before the release of this film. Now, guys, like I've said, there's a lot of people that do believe that the SAG strike, and especially the W uh, strike, the writer's strike, is gonna last well into February of 2024 at the minimum. At the minimum, mind you. That's bad. I mean, you're gonna see massive delays on everything. Everything related to Star Wars, Marvel, Disney in general, and it's not just Disney, it is everything. So, you're gonna have a lot of reruns for late night television for a while, stuff like that. You're gonna have a lot of reruns for a lot of other shows that are currently, you know, aired on television. So, it really is quite interesting the fact that they are coaching Zegler on what to say and what not to say, and how that too, by the way, we talked about this last week, those demands are something that she is not agreeing with because she believes in free speech, she believes in speaking her mind about this film, but she has to realize that this is a job, this is a business, and typically in the film industry, yes, you get coached, you get told what to say and what not to say in interviews, you know, during the whole promotional phase of these films. Whenever you're promoting a movie, you are told what you are allowed to say and what not to say for multiple factors. Spoilers, th that's just one of the main reasons. Uh, you know, image as a studio, that's another reason. And let's not forget that when you're an actor or an actress, you are representing that studio. Which is why I call Lucasfilm the worst studio in Hollywood. Because they have people that say the worst things of all to people on Twitter, People that are associated with uh, Lucasfilm have said horrible things. You know, I think that at the end of the day, Freddie Prince Jr. is right up there at the top as one of those type of people. Uh, what he said about Gina Carano was quite seventh grader level. And, you know, it really makes you wonder exactly why do they hire people like that. But not to get too off topic, guys, I would like to hear what you all have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys next time.